bowl that give you a treat. Irish spring to play with and lucky charms to eat. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim O'Grady. I like that. My, my intro music had ethnic stereotyping, but unlike Christine's, no sexual positions. <laughs> Next time. Okay. <laughs> you promise? Okay. Um, so, so, so my story takes place in a, in a pre-digital time. So there will be phones with cords and, and letters that exist as physical objects and rolls of film that go in cameras. So try to reset your consciousness and, and imagine what that was like at one time. Uh, you're 20 years old, you're living in the Bronx, it's the day before Christmas, the phone is ringing, it wakes you up, you answer it, it's your friend Mark calling to tell you that the Mets have traded your favorite player. And you say, motherfucker, who, who's gonna play center field? Who'd they get for him? And he goes, I don't know. And you say, well, how do you know that there's a trade? He says, well, I'm reading it in the newspaper. And you say, well, read the next sentence. <laughs> and he says, they got Mookie Wilson. And you say, who's that? And he says, I don't know. And then you say, Mark, are you calling me at 8 a.m. to talk about the Mets? And he says, oh, well, um, I was wondering if you'd be cool with me and Katie going out for dinner tonight. And because the you in this story is me, Katie is your girlfriend until a week ago when she told you she needed to take a break from dating. And now, apparently, break time is over <laughs> with your best friend, Mark. So, my best friend, Mark. So I say, uh, listen, Mark, do what you want. I got other problems. Here are my problems. <laughs> my landlord is a minor crime figure who, he, he actually is in a crime family in my Bronx neighborhood, who refuses to heat my slum apartment above 59 degrees or fix the leak in my bathroom ceiling. The total food in my kitchen is a bag of rice, a box of saltines, a head of lettuce, and an empty honey bear. <laughs> the rent is due in a week, and I have $10 to my name. So I'm thinking about this, and fortunately, I have a technique for dealing with a crisis. And what I do is I ignore the main problem I ignore the root cause of the main problem, and I take no actions to solve the problem. In, instead, I focus on something trivial and beside the point. And, and in this case, it's how am I going to spend my last $10? I could buy butter and a 20-pound bag of egg noodles. I could make to Con Ed what they call a good faith payment. I could take my interview jacket, which is actually my only jacket, to the dry cleaners. But then I, I actually look out my bedroom window and I see that there's been a snowfall on my fire escape and it's sort of laying there in this interesting way. So I take my last $10 and I buy a roll of black and white film. George Orwell, in his book, Down and Out in London and Paris, if you know that book, he spends 200 pages describing every shitty job he ever took to avoid going broke. And then one day he wakes up and it happens. He wakes up, he has nothing. And he's surprised that he's still alive. And you know, it makes sense given the the mystical properties we put on money and how we confuse it with life itself. It is really weird to run out of it and not die on the spot. <laughs> so I'm thinking about this as I take my camera with its roll of film to the window and I compose some very nice portraits of 
shadow and snow. And I take the, the roll when it's done to the store and drop it off to be developed. I'm coming back. I have some change in my pocket, so I stop off at the, at the fruit stand where I bump into my landlord, Lenny. Now, Lenny is of the neighborhood. He's about this tall. He's a huge guy. He wears these blackout shades every day of the year. And he has this toupee. And it just, it sort of, it, it lies there. It just looks like an animal that has given up. <laughs> and Lenny sees me. Lenny is no good to anyone, but he has a very useful talent. He can see your weakness. So he says, oh, Grady, how you doing? Rent's due in a week. You going to have it? And it's a better question than he knows. Because I have a roommate, Alice. And she has given me her half of the rent before she went to Colorado on a ski vacation. And I have taken her money and spent it on Christmas presents for my family. So I am less than broke. And he sort of sees this going on behind my eyes. And, and he says, oh, maybe I shouldn't talk to you about the rent. Maybe I should talk to Alice. And I say, maybe you should give us some fucking heat. And Lenny disagrees. So he pushes me into a bin of oranges. And I'll never forget, it is the weirdest feeling to go across a bin of oranges on your back. <laughs> it actually works very well. And I land in the snow on the sidewalk. And when I look up, all the guys who work at the produce stand are standing around laughing at me. So I get up, I walk away, and I hear their laughter, and I hear Lenny say, yeah, I will talk to you in one week. I go upstairs, walk into my cold apartment, I go into the bathroom, I stand, I balance myself on the, like, the lip of the bathtub to check the leak, and a huge piece of plaster comes down in my face. <coughs> a week later, I go back to pick up my film. And the woman behind the counter goes, oh, Grady, oh, Grady, oh, your role was spoiled. We don't have the photos. But what has happened in that intervening week is a newspaper has hired me as a reporter. Alice has written me a long letter, remember letters, <laughs> from Colorado saying she's through with her boyfriend. Alice, like, lovely, wonderful, friendly Alice saying she was really looking forward to coming back and seeing me again. And my landlord has been arrested for tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> Nine months later, what, ha what happens is Mookie Wilson steps into the batter's box with two outs in the bottom of the 10th inning in game six of the World Series. And he swings and he hits a weak little grounder up the first baseline. And because you've been watching baseball your entire life, your mind skips ahead and you see what's gonna happen because it always happens this way. It's like a movie. The fielder picks up the ball, goes to first base, makes the out. Except this time, it happens this way a thousand times out of a thousand, minus one. And this time is the minus one. So instead, the ball goes through the fielder's leg. Mookie Wilson is safe. There is no out. Your team does not lose. In other words, you go broke, but you don't die. Your landlord pushes you on a pile of oranges. A ceiling falls in your face, but you go on to have this moment where this, you see the future unfolding and then in an instant it reverses and does the opposite. And you're elated because if you've ever been broke, if you've ever been down and out, you need to know that fortunes can reverse. They happen. And you've lost your photos. But in buying that film and in, in the defiant way that you spent those last $10, you've already begun to change your fate. Thank you. Thank you.